Hey everyone, so this is a talk that I had last week with Steven Castillo, also known as Steven the Artist. Maybe you've seen him on Reddit or Instagram or TikTok, um, but if you're not familiar with him, I will put links to his social media in the description below, and I would definitely recommend you check him out yourself. But yeah, I first came across Steven from Reddit, and I was just drawn to his art and his art style and like the colors he used, and so I was like, all right, when I move to New York and I make my own money, I am going to buy his art, which is what I did back in 2017. And since then, like his art has been hanging on my walls and I've been following him on Instagram and watching his following and his art grow and evolve. I just think he's so talented and psychedelics have also played a huge part in his art as well and so I thought it'd be cool to have him on this channel, get to know him a bit more and how art and psychedelics have played together in his life. Also I'll be doing a giveaway of one of Steven's merchandise with his art on it from his red bubble and I will explain how you can participate and that at the end of the video. I've watched Steven's paintings on my walls while tripping before and I see like shapes and things in it and the way the colors swirl and weave in together is just beautiful so I would definitely recommend looking at his art while tripping and participating in this giveaway to get a chance to get one of his art things for free or you could just buy art from him directly yourself as well. So anyway, I had a lot of fun talking to Steven. He's such a sweetheart and a down-to-earth guy and so I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. So uh, my first question for you was how did you get started with painting and art in general? Okay, that's a, a very good question. <laughs> that's a very good answer. Okay. Um, so Painting was something that I wanted to do for a long time, but it was like scary to me because all I knew was pencils and pencils are, you know, like a fine point, you yeah. draw and it's like right there, but brushes yeah. they're you know, their hair is in like all that. So it's like, it, I didn't see it as precise. So it was just like a scary thought, right? Yeah. But this one time I had taken some LSD and it was like two days in a row and then you know, I needed something to calm down and yeah. I played Bob Ross on Netflix <laughs> and I watched, I think, like 10 episodes or so, <laughs> you know, and I was just fascinated. Yeah. This I is while to... you were tripping. Yes. Mm. So, you know, the brush on the canvas, that sound and like the movements and, and the paint mixing and all that, I'm yeah. like... I want to experience that, you know, I wanted to experience it. And from there, I just, you know, made it happen. Like I went and got some brushes, started with watercolor. Okay. On paper. Yeah. Dang. So, it. so how did you even like start to learn it? How did, uh, did you just continue watching Bob Ross videos or? Um, so yeah, sometimes I would watch Bob Ross videos. Um, but what started like I started with watercolors you yeah. know just trying to do like galaxy stuff on, yeah. on paper you yeah. know like the very minimal basic easiest thing to get yeah. started with yeah I found you on reddit and uh right. and uh that was back in like 2017 I think yeah it's and uh yeah. yeah I feel like back then it was it was more uh definitely more experimental and mm. uh it has definitely gotten more and more sophisticated over the years. Yeah. yeah it's just the practice. It's like every time that I get in it, you yeah. know, it's like I see something and then it's like, okay, I'll put that in practice next time. And that's how it's gone. Like that's the process. Yeah. So a lot of your paintings have to do with like, I don't know what you call it, but I've heard it called like pore painting or fluid art, you know, where you have all the paints and then you, uh, mix the colors and then you like move the canvas and stuff um so what about that because that has been kind of consistent throughout the years for you what about that kind of art do you like um that um 
that I found somebody on Instagram that was okay. doing the pours. Yeah. And I asked them how they did it. And yeah. the dude was like, you just, you know, that all I do is like, I get little paint bottles pour them and then just move the canvas. So I was like, okay, I got to try that. And yeah. same thing, like experimenting with that, you know, and then I'm like, okay, this seems like it could use something else. Yeah. And there's like, a, you know, again, like experimenting with that. So it makes it sound so simple because you were one of the first people I saw do that. Now I think it's, it's pretty common now. There's even like a poor painting subreddit, but uh, I tried it myself and it's like, it's actually pretty hard because you need to get the right consistency of the paint. Otherwise it like blends in together too much or it doesn't blend in or it doesn't fill the whole canvas or something. So it's actually like a lot harder <laughs> than it yeah. sounds. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually, it's, it's work. Like you gotta work for yeah. sure. So um, uh, my other question was, how did you get started with psychedelics? It seems like that might've come first before. Yeah, the, uh, like way, yeah. way before. Yeah. So I actually got here to, in, to Indiana from El Salvador okay. when I was 15. Yeah. So I got into high school here, right? Yeah. So getting into high school, um, I remember I had you know multiple classes that I would get on the computer and somehow I ended up like, you know, seeing something about it or, you know, somewhere on the uh -huh. internet. And then, you know, like from there, the investigation started, you know, then I found um, Terrence McKenna and I started yeah. listening to him. And from there and there, and like, I spent a long time before I actually took anything, just like learning and right. oh. you know, hear, listening to people talk about it. And, you know, it yeah. was a search for it until I found it, you know, eventually found it. Yeah. So that's how it, that's how that started. That's interesting. Because I feel like for me anyway, it started off. I just came across the substances first and then I started getting into the Terrence McKenna, all of that stuff. But you're right. kind of like, that was first. Yes. Yes. Okay. Information was first. Yeah. And, and then I guess it's so funny that you were on LSD and watching Bob Ross and that, that's how this whole painting thing got started. Yeah. 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 So how would you say that psychedelics influence your art? Um, you know how when you when you trip, there's like anything that you can focus on. It's just it's just like you you just hyper focus yeah. on whatever, and if you let that lose, then it'll take you right. Yeah. So then, in a way, now you know because since I started making art, all I think about is art. So then, whenever I mm. take anything. It imme the focus immediately goes there. Yeah. It goes on anything that has to do with art, like technique, subjects, like theory, anything that has to do with art, like immediately. Anything that I take immediately takes me there. Ah. You know? Damn. So it, it seems like it really helps your creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like it helps while I'm, I'm on it and after. Right. You know? So yeah. like I said, since the first time that I started painting, you know, whether I'm on it or not, it's like, I'm still in that space. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, do you trip and paint often? Not often, but okay. sometimes I do. Um, I have done four murals so far. Yeah. So the murals, I did trip each time. Wow. Yeah. So just a part of the mural or for all the whole thing? The whole thing. Like, it's like, oh, wow, they're, they, they both have been two days each. Okay. So yeah, the whole time. Uh, you just did a mural recently, right? Yes. So, yes, that, <laughs> so you were tripping for that one? Yes, the whole time. <laughs> wow. How was that like? It was extremely intense. <laughs> <laughs> this mural was, was out, outdoors too. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Were you alone out there painting? No, this one was the best one because it's in this art park, which is oh. um, it's like they built these walls yeah. like in the middle of the woods and there's trails that connect all the walls. Wow. And they invite like over 50 artists or so and they all get to painting for, from, on the weekend. Wow. And all the walls get painted over every three three months or so. 
So oh, so it's just for three months that'll be there. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty fleeting, but still. <laughs> yeah. I kind of like the concept of it being fleeting at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, you just get invited there to to have fun, you know? Yeah. There's no, there's no payment. Right. That. You just go to have fun to meet other artists. You know, yeah. you have a party on the, on the at, at night. You connect with people. So it's a, a yeah. beautiful event. Yeah. Do you know if other people were tripping? Yes. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them. So I remember reading uh, one time that uh, you mentioned how, like, while you trip and you paint, that, like, you kind of remember of the section of the painting, you kind of remember what you were thinking about oh, during yes. the trip. Yes. Dang, that's, that's, right. that's so cool. Because yeah. for me, like, I'm a writer, so I, like, write things down. But for you, your journal is kind of like your art. But yeah, yeah. It's like, exactly. in the art, your thoughts. <laughs> And that's yeah. how you preserve it. Sometimes I listen to audiobooks or I listen to Terrence McKenna for mm-hmm. hours. Mm-hmm. So then the next day or whenever I'm painting again, like and I go back to that area, it's like it's like the impression, you know, right. not, not so much the like the words, but the moment where I listened to the phrase or the, yeah. the words and what that made me feel in that moment it's like that's what gets implanted right. in, the, in the area so it's like a personal connection I feel like yes. with the art so so when you have to like give the art away or like sell it um does it um is it hard to do that or no like, not at all nah, you're like nah <laughs> no I'm like on to the next one yeah damn yeah, nice yeah. so you you mentioned Terrence McKenna a lot um have you have you listened to pretty much everything that he's done so. yeah. <laughs> yeah so do you just like re-listen to it yeah okay yeah. what what is your favorite like work by him uh the the book true hallucinations okay I've read the book but I've also heard him narrate the book okay that is like I think eight hours long and I think that's like the the very very best I don't know if you have you read that book or heard about it I haven't no I will put on my to read list okay it's a it's a like literally a trip like (laughs) like it's like how he got started with this whole okay yeah okay yeah I'll definitely want to check that out and you would recommend while tripping to listen to that well if you if, if you get to the you know it's like the good part starts like in the middle towards the end okay but yeah I, definitely of course oh also what would you say is your favorite psychedelic um favorite i think that lsd probably yeah 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 i think that one's mine too at the moment but it changes <laughs> Yeah, that's true that's true it depends on on what i'm doing and you know it yeah. depends on, on for what you know for the purpose yeah. of me painting or painting a mural i feel like that helps me tap into like an energetic creative state yeah you know, instead of like a mushroom more like a mellow right analy- or like mellow feely you know yeah state. like the, yeah. the other one is like energetic and yeah so uh another thing I noticed about your art um you you tend to use like um blue and purple and pink a lot I mean you do have like gold and and silver and stuff but is there anything about those colors um that Mm -hmm. draw you in so on my very first trips yeah because I had listened to Terrence McKenna you know the first thing that I did, you know, it was like the heroic dose, the five brands. Oh, boy. Going, and, you know, lay in the darkness with your eyes closed. So I remember like the very first introduction to the whole realm was like, you know, as I was laying there, it was like this tunnel that I was going through and it was like purple and teal, wow. you know, and all these geometric patterns and it was like purple and teal yeah. and pink. And it was all fluorescent and it was all like vibrant. Yeah. And from there, like 
those colors and at the beginning of all the journeys is like purple and like those that that side of the color yeah. wheel is like yeah that <laughs> so I just feel them you know they feel so yeah. so intimate to me yeah dude I <laughs> I really like that color combination as well and yeah. because you know I bought some of your art um back in 2017 and I bought the the three like um squares and they had that color scheme. I don't know if you remember. It was like a like small small one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So so actually, um, those helped me kind of create the color scheme for my bedroom. <laughs> okay. Which, yeah, which kind of helped me create the color scheme for my YouTube channel, <laughs> and uh, it's kind That's of true. come into like <laughs> my favorite colors too. Like I kind of base. Yeah, there's something about those colors for me, like maybe yeah. galaxy related or space. Right. I don't know. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. And those colors I was like attracted to before I started my trips. Mm-hmm. For some reason. I don't know. Um, there was just something about them. And then when yeah. I started, you know, it was like they were like, oh yeah, like I feel them, you know. <laughs> I feel them being part of me for some reason. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. And that was one thing like going, you said you started with pencils first. And then yeah. now that you can use like colors, <laughs> it's like a whole yeah. new, a whole new world, basically. That's true. That's true. Another thing I noticed about your art, and I think I asked you about this like a few years ago or a year ago, but you like to include sacred geometry um, in your art. And I think I asked you like, what is that <laughs> that you added? You're like, oh, it's sacred geometry yeah what about yeah what about sacred geometry do you like um it you know one thing is that that's what is like present in those altar states you know that that, that's the thing it seems like that it's made out of but at the same time I see it everywhere you know in in here you know outside in plants and in everywhere it just seems that it's present everywhere it seems like the grid you know, some sort of grid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what shapes um, from that do you like the most? Mm, what shapes? So, uh, the flower of life. You know, you know which one that is. Yeah, I think that that that's something that I I also like started drawing before I started oh, taking really? psychedelics. Yes. And you knew it was sacred geometry back then. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. I I started reading this book. Uh, I think it was called the ancient something about the flower of life or something. Okay. Was, yeah. Okay. And from there, I was like, oh, and then, you know, it talked about, you know, for you to get to know what you should draw it. So I started drawing it. Oh. I feel drawing it. It was like, oh, it, I don't know. It was like teaching me something, wow. you know? Yeah. Damn. Yes. Cool. And then now, like your recent art, like the ones in your background, have a lot of like historical or classical, ancient kind of figures. Why do you think this is where what you've been focused on these days? Um, so then, you know, at some point, I started to try to get informed about art, the history of art, yeah. right? So then I kind of got attracted to this period where people wanted to draw like religious figures and religious iconography and stuff like that. And just the way that they depict all those images. Yeah. They're all trying to reach that divine something. Right. Yeah. You know, with the, with the everything, the pose, the, 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 the facial expressions. Yeah. All that is like it points towards that. So that's what I appreciate about that, you know? Yeah. Are you uh, religious yourself or? No, I wouldn't say I'm religious, but I did grow up Catholic. Yeah. You know, against my will, but, <laughs> you know, I went through that. So now I remember that, you know, things that I'm like, okay, they were trying to reach something through yeah. this, you know? So whatever, they, whatever images they use, whatever things that they do, it's all like part of a ritual to get in, you know, get in touch with whatever they totally hot. Yeah. So I feel that. Yeah. That's something. Cause I, I mean, my, my family is technically Catholic as well. Growing up, 
they're not super Catholic, but it's something I didn't actually appreciate until recently. And I, and now it's like, before I'd be like, oh, like I'm not part of that at all. Like I denounce religion and I'm not religious necessarily myself, but I appreciate what they're trying to do. Like what you said, trying to reach that divine. Yeah. Um, And, uh, and another thing, like, I think all kind of religions are really interesting to me now. Like, uh, Mm -hmm. Even you, you did Medusa recently <laughs> and, uh, and I've been reading like Greek mythology. <laughs> yeah. Some other, like, yeah, some yeah just too. like how different people, like people across history view yeah. these kinds of divinity. Like it's really, right. interesting to me, even though I don't necessarily um, believe in that, but I can appreciate it too. Yeah. That, that's the thing. Yeah. I, like, yeah. You just see how they, the, the way that they tried right yeah so um so what else do you think are your biggest influences or inspiration for your art influences well i think that every artist that i see on instagram every artist that i meet or everyone that i Mm -hmm. yeah basically everything because i can (laughs) i can see something in everything right i've come to that you know where like i see plants or flowers or the or clouds or the sky sunset sunrises anything like yeah. architecture yeah anything I can just like get influenced by like I see little things you yeah. know here and there so in a way I'm just like I feel like I'm open to be influenced you know but I, you know again like I just take pieces right everything yeah oh, damn so cool um <laughs> so like <laughs> yeah what do you think what do you think is the underlying motivation or like what drives you do you think to create art um well I feel like a fire within me Uh uh-huh where like I'm seeing these things and the fire is to like release it to like put it through the filter of me yeah release it so that other people can be influenced by that yeah you know so that's that's like the ultimate motivation I want people to, like I, I do it I'm like here you, you see, look at this you know what do you feel what do you see you know so yeah. that's the ultimate motivation to to for it to hit people and for right. it to motivate or influence or inspire yeah yeah I feel like <laughs> in some ways we're just trying to all do that to each other yeah <laughs> Maybe not, even maybe not necessarily with art, um, but in just conversation or something too. Um, but yeah, I, I feel similarly like, cause I like to write. So I'm like, why, what compels me to want to create? Like, do I want it to be remembered in some way and like make an impact to somebody and maybe live on through them or something like that? Um, yeah, yeah, because I see artists and their work and then just by looking at their work like I feel something I get inspired and I'm like okay if this happens to me that means that it happens to other people so it's just a matter of getting it to other people getting it to the person that's gonna be touched by whatever you produce you know and it's just a matter of time like for a long time you know uh, when I started I didn't know what I was doing and none of that but eventually I started to realize like okay I people started to tell me that they felt my paintings right. you know like I know what you're trying to say you know and I'm like oh, okay like okay <laughs> this is going somewhere you yeah. know like I had art shows like my first art show that I did um I had the geometrical stuff the sacred geometry yeah. stuff, and a lot of people came up to me and they were like I know what you're I know what you're expressing here like I've seen this I've seen things like that and I'm like okay so you trip that's what you're telling me (laughs) you you you've seen it you know so that's that's everything right there when they look at you and they're like I know what you're trying to say yeah Yeah. amazing yeah are there any uh specific artists that that you like their art uh definitely Alex Gray has been Mm -hmm. a (laughs) classic you know yeah um artists throughout history yeah obviously like Michelangelo Da Vinci all of the good ones (laughs) you know and others that I don't remember their name but like I was definitely you know um influenced 
by their like their overall just expression yeah yeah what so what kind of genre would you say your art is <laughs> I have no idea <laughs> me neither I honestly i don't know either yeah because people ask me like what, what is that style called yeah i don't know I, you know <laughs> what do you think what do you yeah. suggest <laughs> yeah i guess i i guess i consider it like psychedelic art but that's pretty broad as right well. So, yeah, I was curious what you, you considered it. <laughs> right, like, you know, I was, at some point, I was, um, like, I liked Salvador Dali, mm. you know. I mean, I still, I still do, but I wanted to, you know, mimic him, and I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to paint surreal things, you know. I wanted to paint sur surrealism. Yeah. So I guess, it, like, there's an influence of surrealism in there. You know, there's, like, yeah. psychedelic art in there. There's, like, expressionism I, but I don't know you know it's a mixture of everything yeah like I, you know, because I, I'm influenced by everything yeah yeah what what is the your favorite art piece that you've made so far um it, that that changes I think that like the, yeah. the the one that I that I finish is my favorite for that moment <laughs> and then it changes but like as of right now I think that this one right here is a uh, like um from the sculpture the ecstasy of saint Teresa. okay that one i think is because i'm like experimenting with like some white highlights so like it's the latest one so okay. that, that's my favorite one okay got you but uh yeah who knows what's in store for you <laughs> in the future yeah definitely yeah. want to do bigger murals for sure oh yeah what about murals do you like the size, the size, the scale. Yeah. Like, this one that I did, you know, is in like in the middle of nowhere in Tennessee. Yeah. And it's a park in the woods. And <laughs> the first day, like I, towards like the end of the day, I was looking around and there was like everybody was leaving, you know, going to the party. And I just like was like on it, right? And I started painting the, the face. And then until like, I'm like, okay, I see the face. And then I stepped back and like, I walked away. And then when I was like walking around, you could just see like this huge face in the middle of the trees, like yeah. in it was kind of dark. Yeah. It's like mm, that. Yeah. And I can only imagine like a bigger wall, you know, or some, something like full body. Yeah. That's what I want. Uh, I want you. I see. What what would be like your dream art piece that you could do? Dream art piece, bigger or like the side of a, a building, or <laughs> yeah, like the side of a building that is at least ten stories, or yeah. in that realm, and it would be some sort of like scene, like a few full body characters with some yeah. other things, like a story that I could put together with yeah. like you know symbols and all that like that would be the that'd be hella cool yeah because i i live in new york and there's a lot of that kind of scale art pieces randomly in the city so uh yeah that'd be cool to maybe see yours one day <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm i'm aiming for that yeah yeah what else do you think is is in your future like is there any other kind of art styles that you want to try out or you think you're going to continue with this like classical statue piece no I definitely uh I'm gonna start creating my own references you know I want some more like dramatic poses you know like I want to get into like different angles yeah yeah create my own like this is to me is like almost like practice yeah you know, because like the sculptures they're like easier to you know to find and to find the their, their shape and their shading yeah so I want to get more intricate I see I see what do you think is like the the biggest challenge for you as an artist probably finding like a <laughs> like the time to be okay with like you know like a balance of like yeah. okay I painted enough today I need to stop I need to like balance yeah 
Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, like, how do you know when a piece is finished? <laughs> and yeah. how do you know, like, when to keep working on it? Yeah, like, it's just a matter of, like, <laughs> that. that's the hard part because <laughs> I don't know, you know, like, I see a piece that I think I finished. Yeah. But then I'm like, I just want to, like, yeah, like a little bit more over there. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, making time for other things. You know, because it's almost like an obsession. Yeah. If I have a commission or if I have a painting or if I have four paintings that I'm working on, I feel there's like almost like an anxiety to just like, no, I can't stop. I can't take a break. I got to keep going. I got to keep going. And there I am, like, it's like 4 a.m. and I'm still painting, you know, and then like I wake up late and I'm like, oh, here we go again. And it's like, so finding a schedule, finding all that is like balancing the day. Yeah, how many hours a day you think you spend painting or like a week? Uh, on a day, like yeah. it can go from like six to 20 hours. Like it, 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 like, it depends. <laughs> like if there's something going on with the family or something, like okay. I'll wait until the last second to go see them. Yeah. And I'll hurry up and get back, you know, yeah. but if I don't have anything to do, you know, like I'll just make time for you know, like a workout or like a bike ride. Yeah. And then it's just worrying about painting, worrying about painting. Damn. So have you, how, how many years has it been now that you've been doing this? I've been doing it for f- four and a half years yeah. total. Yeah. yeah. So so it's like something you still imagine you're doing in the near future. You know, see no signs of stopping. Oh, no. I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. No. Oh man. Yeah. So like take me through like a typical day of you painting, like setting up your studio and and everything. Like what are you listening to? Okay, okay. All right. So, you know, like I get up first thing, you know, I get up and I look at the canvas. You know, I go to the canvas and I'm like, okay, you know, I remember where I left off. And then I'm like, I just like immediately sit down prepare the paint yeah the water the you know the like the paper towels yeah the working space yeah then you know get to the music you know I like to listen to I found this um uh I don't know if it's a, a person DJ or whatever it is but it's like some sort of like slow rap beat okay. slow, kind of like it's really cool so as soon as I play that, just like if I if I play like an audiobook or something, it's like as soon as I hit play, it's like, you know, like zoned yeah. in. And there I go, you know, and you're looking at the reference and I'm in there. Mm. And then like when I come back out, it's been like four hours. And I'm like, oh, I got to, you know, go to the gym or something. And then I go to the gym, but I'm over there thinking about the piece. And I'm like, OK, I got to get back. Yeah. And then I come back to the studio again get in and then you know it's been another four hours and I'm like oh I gotta go outside <laughs> for a little bit and then I get on my bike go for a ride same thing can't yeah. wait to get back and then I come back you know still like listening to an audiobook or yeah. uh, you know, somebody's talk or podcast I see yeah go in and then suddenly it's like 2 a.m <laughs> <laughs> So, so you're doing this full time basically. Yeah. 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 So like the, the pieces behind you, how long about on average do they take? So these are like the biggest size. There are 30 by 40 inches. They can take, um, the way I do them is like, I work on it like one day or for a couple hours or for one session, which is like four hours or so. And then when I come back, I can paint on another one. So I'm working on like three at the same time. Okay. And that way it takes like like a week to two weeks. Okay, got you. But if I'm focused on it, just, just on that one, then it can take a few days. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so um, that's pretty much um, most my questions um for people who are watching where is the best way to reach you i would say instagram okay yes yeah, the instagram, yeah. that's where responsive. i'm at 
yes dms yeah yeah that, that that's my that's my spot right there all right all right got you i will link your socials <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today about your art it's super cool getting to know you a little more because your art is hanging on my wall and like I follow you <laughs> on Instagram and dude like I'll see you on Reddit like I'll just be scrolling on my home feed and you'll show up and you've been doing the like Reddit live as well yes right? oh that yeah that goes wild sometimes oh does it <laughs> what happens <laughs> you know like I'll paint you know and then yeah. I'll be painting and then I'm like okay like I'm a you know set up the phone and I yeah. start the live and then I'll you know get them painting then I see and there's like five people watching and I'm like okay and then they start commenting and I you yeah. know I'm interacting suddenly there's like a hundred people and I'm like okay cool and then like more comments out of nowhere there's like three thousand people watching <laughs> and then there's like you know comments and like questions and all that and I'm like okay I can't pay anymore <laughs> yeah. so I just like started talk to them and and then suddenly like five thousand people and then that yeah. goes on for like for like 30 minutes yeah yeah after 30 minutes there's like 20 people left or <laughs> people left, and it's like a wave of attention that comes in so at that point I'm just like oh anybody wants to buy some art <laughs> send me a message please and a lot of them do <laughs> oh that's so cool yeah Reddit but yeah. could tell I guess you're getting a lot of engagement <laughs> yeah. on that live so they're boosting you hella yeah, but some people, you know, just like some people are just literally scrolling through and then they see this person painting. So they're like, what are you doing on my feed? You know, what what is this? I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's all kind of people. Yeah. I like it when that happens, but it's almost like luck. Sometimes it doesn't happen at all. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, so that ended quite abruptly, but I hope you enjoyed that conversation and now that you're more familiar with Steven the artist and his art, I will explain how you can participate in this giveaway. So there's no requirement to subscribe or like or comment or share or anything like that. Literally, the only thing you have to do is I will have a link to a Google form in the description and you just have to submit your email in that Google form and that's that's it. Then in 10 days from now when I post this video, so on July 22nd, 2021, I will choose a winner randomly from the emails that have been submitted and I will contact that winner and they'll have three days to respond to me with like what they want from Steven's Redbubble account up to 25 USD dollar value and that's not including shipping and things like that, tax or whatever, um, and their address so I know where to ship it to and things like that. Um, and if they don't respond to me in three days then I will choose someone else randomly and so on. So that's how that will work and I am really excited to share Steven's story and his work with you all on my channel and with one of you in this giveaway and thanks so much for listening. Thank you again to Steven the Artist for being the first to come on my channel and do these kind of like interview talk chatty type stuff um, which I think I want to do more often in the future with some other awesome people. Alright, till next time. Bye!